This knife has a straight edge on it, so it's very easy. And maybe in our world here, there lives a happy little mountain. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Caitlin. I upload a whole bunch of different types of videos on this channel, mainly surrounding like true crime videos, as well as a little bit of university and lifestyle sprinkled in where I can. Today I'm back with a very, very strange case. So I'm going to be discussing the very mysterious case of John and Linda Sohus and their disappearance slash potential murder. It's all very interesting. Um, so I can't wait to hear your guys' like thoughts in the comments below. As always, if you want to know any information about what I'm wearing, the music, um, any of my social media links, everything you need to know is in the description. So if you have a question, most likely it will be answered down there. So if you want to hear a little bit about the strange case that is John and Linda's disappearance, keep on watching and we shall just get started. So John and Linda's case takes place in the year of 1994 in San Marino, California, when a man, he was working on the construction building a residential pool. So he was building a swimming pool in a residential property. He came across the dismembered remains of a human. The remains had been dismembered, like I said, and spread out across three large plastic bags and also a box. They had been buried under this property in the back garden. And so when they'd obviously dug up the ground in hopes of putting in a swimming pool, they came across this body. Virtually immediately, rumors began speculating the possibility of the remains belonging to one of the previous tenants of the home, John or Linda Sohus, as the pair had gone missing about a decade before. So like I said, pretty much John and Linda were living in this home in California in 1984 when they mysteriously went missing. Their appearance had been so seemingly unexplainable and strange, with absolutely no indication whatsoever, that no leads at the time had ever really been established. Upon the discovery of these human remains in their old back garden 10 years later, people immediately began speculating that perhaps this was the unfortunate fate of John and Linda Sohus. Obviously this discovery led to kind of a re-examination of the case and everything came out then, um, the, every piece of information that had ever been missed or any new piece of information kind of began piecing together in hopes of reopening this case uh, into the disappearance of John and Linda Sohus. So at the time in the initial investigation in 1984 when the pair first went missing, there were a lot of blanket statements that were made to the investigators from their like close friends saying that they believed, you know, they were under the impression at least that the pair were really happy with their living situation, they were seemingly perfect, like they had no issues that they knew of and this was why the whole disappearance seemed really really strange and unexplainable. However, close friends began to piece together um, and kind of come together, put forward these pieces of information that gave them the impression that in reality they weren't very happy. They'd apparently began feeling extremely trapped inside this home in San Marino, California. Now they were living full time with John's mother also in the house. So the three of them were living there and they just started to get the impression that John and Linda wanted to start a new life of their own somewhere else. They were apparently planning on moving out the first chance they could, but because of their jobs, they were obviously both working really hard, but money situations meant that they couldn't initially start this new life straight away. The pair were both in their mid late twenties and they were still establishing kind of their career paths. John worked part time for a few different companies in relation to computer programming basically, but nothing that really yielded any impressive salaries. Linda had dreams of becoming a well-known artist, like a well-established um, kind of home brand artist. And obviously this is quite a slow profession, like it doesn't really yield loads of strong results straight away. But apparently her close friends said that around the time of her disappearance, things started looking up for Linda's career and they were kind of heading in a great successful path. Now, just before they disappeared, a friend of Linda's had told the investigators that Linda had phoned her up and said, that John had been offered a job with the government and it would require them to move virtually immediately to New York. Linda had apparently been so excited because it meant that this couple would be able to carry out this life that they'd been planning on, they'd been working so hard for, you know, they'd be able to move out, they'd have a life by themselves. It was apparently a good money job, although she did remain very, very secretive about what the job in the government was. They had no idea what it was or whereabouts they were moving to in New York or why or how long, but yeah, they seemed very, very happy to be planning this trip. So in order to get their bearings in New York, the pair had planned an almost instant trip 
to New York for two weeks. Um, like I said, she was very excited about this. She was really, really um, looking forward to going to the, on this trip to see their potential new home. And so the pair set off on this allegedly fortnight long trip but then weeks turned into months and no one heard from them and they just didn't seem to reappear once again. Back in California, the pair had six cats that they were, or they owned in their home, but just before they went away on this allegedly two week long trip, they placed them in a kennel and paid upfront for a two week stay. However, it was when eight weeks passed and no one had come to collect the cats that the cattery or the kennel owners decided to call up their emergency contact and say, why hasn't, well, you know, why haven't they come back to collect their cats? Have they just left them here, assuming that we just take them off their hands? So the emergency contact that the kennel owner was able to come in contact with was Linda's sister, Kathy. And all of this was news to Kathy. So Kathy knew that they'd been away, but she hadn't really heard from them and she kind of just assumed that they returned home okay and that they just hadn't managed to get a chance to catch up. And so upon hearing that they hadn't been to collect their six pets, Kathy immediately became concerned. She was, she said she knew straight away, she was adamant that something was wrong because neither of them would do that intentionally. So Kathy's next port of call when she kind of wanted to look into it herself, she rang up a woman named Dee Dee Sohus, who was John's mother who the couple were living with in California. She assumed that because she lived with the couple, she'd be able to provide Kathy with some sort of information, whether they uh, decided to stay in New York for longer or if they'd moved out or if they'd made it home okay, they just hadn't had a chance to contact anyone or something because like I said, she lived with them full time. However, she really was not helpful at all and Kathy said that she kind of very quickly realised that Dee Dee had a bit of a drinking problem. So it took her a number of phone calls to try and get a little bit of information out of Dee Dee. She said it depended on what time of day you called her, she would be various levels of drunk and the drunker she was, the more kind of crazy her stories about where the couple were would be. But the main thing that she did keep repeating was that John and Linda were on a secret mission and she knew this adamant, she was uh, sure, but like I said, this was kind of seeming like the drunk ramblings of, of an older woman who just didn't really know what she was talking about. So it was kind of hard for Kathy to even be able to establish what was true and what was false. But like I said, this claim of them being on a secret mission would pop up again and again from Dee Dee. And as much as a lot of her um, kind of stories seem to be not very credible, it was this, that, the fact that it kept repeating it made it seem like there was some truth behind it. And so when Kathy ended up filing an official uh, missing persons report for John and Linda, law enforcement, obviously their first port of call was also to visit Dee Dee Sohus. Dee Dee also told the investigators exactly what she'd told Kathy, that the couple were on a secret mission, but this time she claimed that she knew of this secret mission because of a secret source. So she said that she had this source that told this information about her son and Linda, and she refused to name who the source was and any other information. So because of the blatant lack of information, there was no sign of either of them being in trouble, but also like in this situation, it's a couple that gone missing that wanted to start a life elsewhere together. Investigators didn't really have much of a choice until they thought that something had happened to them. They were kind of just left under the impression that maybe the, ha the couple just up and left to start a new life together. Then three months later, a close friend of Linda received a postcard and it was actually postmarked from France. So I have what was written on the postcard here. So it read, Dear Sue, kind of miss New York, oops, but this can be lived with, John and Linda. She said this immediately felt extremely strange because there was nothing personal about the letter whatsoever. It didn't say, you know, we had an accident, you know, we miss New York, but we're in France now. Um, how long, they didn't say how long they were gonna be there for, they didn't say whereabouts they were staying. There was nothing personal whatsoever. Not even a, tell mum I love her, um, I'll, I'll speak to you soon, I'll call you later, anything. So she said that this just didn't sound like Linda whatsoever. And not long after this, Linda's family received a very similar postcard, also postmarked from France. It was addressed to Linda's mother. And again, like that postcard to her friend, it didn't really say where they were, why they were there, or when they were coming back. And just like Sue, the family were adamant that something was wrong because it just didn't sound like Linda whatsoever. And they were also sure that if they had actually been planning this secret trip to Europe, she, there was no way she was going to be able to keep quiet about it because she told everyone about New York. So if she was that excited about New York, she was going to be just as excited about Europe. So they were adamant that something else was going on. 
And not long after this, it appeared that Dee Dee Sohus actually had a sudden change of heart and she suddenly wanted to tell investigators everything she knew. She told them that her source that told her that John and Linda had been on a secret mission was actually a man who had been renting out the guest house in the California home that the three lived in. His name was Christopher Chichester, I think is how you pronounce it. He'd been renting out that guest house for about two years, so he'd lived with all three of them for quite a while. But then around the time of the couple's disappearance, maybe just a little bit afterwards, he suddenly disappeared, didn't leave any information, he didn't leave a forwarding address or anything like that, he just up and left. And she also claimed that she believed that around the same time, John's truck, where he had left it or when he'd gone away to New York, was actually missing. Um, she says she couldn't pinpoint exactly when it had gone missing because she hadn't thought to check on it, but she just happened to notice it was missing and she thought that was worth mentioning. So despite all this being really, really strange, from an investigator's point of view, it's kind of all coincidental. There was no sign that either of them were related or anything like that. So once again, we kind of had no choice but to assume that there was no foul play involved. After sharing all this information, Dee Dee Soho sold the house that the three had been living in. She moved in by herself into a mobile home, and sadly she died in 1986 without receiving any answers of what happened to John or Linda. And then almost a year after Dee Dee's death, uh, the case kind of reopened again, a new piece of evidence came forward when John's missing truck turned up around 3,000 miles away in Connecticut. A man had been attempting to sell John's truck under the name Christopher Crow, and the person who he tried to sell it to thought that it appeared kind of strange and so reported it. And at this time, it was strongly believed that the person who was trying to sell this truck was also the man who had been living in the Soho's house, renting out the guest house. And at this point in the investigation, uh, law enforcement had no choice but to kind of assume that this man, this mystery man using loads of aliases, was at least in possession of some form of evidence, some form of information as to what had happened to the couple. But like I said, because of all these aliases, they were never able to track him down at this point. And then sadly, the case remained cold until the discovery of the human remains in the old Soho's Pack Garden in 1994. Sadly, the remains could never be conclusively identified as either of the Soho's couples because of neither of them having any uh, dental records on, on file. So they weren't able to conclusively finalize the fact that it could be one of them. However, anthropologists were adamant that the remains would have been of a man who matched John's description pretty well. So they thought that in all likelihood, the remains were that of John Sohus. Upon discovering these remains, obviously they decided to do a much more thorough search of the property because they hadn't had any reason to do so in previous years. But because of the discovery of these body, um, they decided to go a lot more thorough both in the normal house and the guest house. They decided to use something called luminol, which when it comes into contact with blood, it glows. It's like a really, really distinctive glow. And so this is what they decided to use in hopes of finding any traces or evidence. And it was when they reached the guest house and they placed luminol all over the floor that there was a distinctive glow coming from the guest house. So there was no way of telling whose blood it was, but because there was such a high amount of it, they assumed that in all likelihood it was most likely John Sohus's blood who had then been buried in the back garden. And so this is kind of the story or scenario that is supported by investigators. They believe it's the most likely. They don't have any reason to not believe this is the case. However, if this is the case, it does beg the question of what happened to Linda. More than a decade after this discovery, investigators managed to come across a man who turns out to be the man who had been using the name Christopher Chichester to rent out the Soho's guest house. He was a man named, I'm sorry if I pronounced this wrong, Christian Gehartschreiter, and his residence in the Soho's property was confirmed through fingerprint matching when he was, and he was actually arrested on an unrelated parental abduction charge. He was filed immediately as a person of interest in the disappearance of Linda Soho's and the murder of John Soho's. And then because of all this evidence, he was then soon sentenced to 27 years to life for John Sohus's murder. However, at this point, he still remains adamant that he had nothing to do with it. But from the investigator's point of view, they obviously felt like they had enough evidence to convict him. So Christian Gehartschreiter still remains in prison to this day, but there are no exact answers as to what exactly happened to John Sohus or where Linda Sohus is, what happened to her, whether she's still alive or not. Um, so I think there's a lot really to discuss here. I think it's actually quite fascinating. Not only that investigators went ahead and convicted him, even though there was a lot of evidence against him that wasn't necessarily um, exact evidence, 
But also, what do you think happened to John and Linda? Like, I don't know what scenario could have gone down in this case. There's a lot of discussion about this. I would love to hear your thoughts down below. That's everything I have to talk about today. I hope you guys found this interesting. Like I said, leave your thoughts down below because I love reading through your guys' comments, as well as leave any other cases you want me to do down below. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this interesting and I'll see you guys soon for another video. Bye.